Hello viewers, welcome to Top Notch TV. Uh, with you today is teacher Emi Sinjabani, a teacher of English and Literature, an examiner as well as an author. With me is teacher Rispa Okwisa, a teacher of English and Literature, as well as an author and an examiner. In our previous sessions, uh, concerning this book, we looked at Act 1, uh, the three scenes in Act 1, as well as uh, Act 2. Two, scene one. So this is a continuation and during this session we are going to look at plot analysis or the events that are taking place in both at two and no sorry in both scene two and scene three of act two. So to start us off uh, I'm going to welcome teacher Rispa uh, to take us through act two scene two. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. We are going to tackle Act 2, Scene 2. And as Act 2, Scene 2, the, uh, I'll connect it to the previous one. The previous one is where Madame, the previous one is where Miss Nicole had to leave the two students because she had been summoned by the principal. Now we are looking at this scene, it is taking place in the principal's boardroom. She has been summoned by Miss Narin. What are the contents of their conversation? Miss Narin has summoned Miss Nicole for the purpose of preparing her that the mayor was on his way to particularly speak to uh, Madame Nicole. And as uh, being older, we are looking at Miss, Na Miss Narin being older, she is giving pieces of advice to Miss Nicole. Among them, she's telling them that to reconsider her stand. Whenever you're waging war, you need to know which wars are to be left, which wars you can wage, and which ones are to be deferred. And now she's talk, uh, when, she's talking to, uh, when she's talking to Nicole, she's telling her that the mayor, is, uh, the mayor is such a powerful opponent, and it is being compared to uh, it is being compared to competing with an elephant in a wrestling match, which will end up with someone being trampled. At the same time. She is asking Nicole to, uh, to concentrate on her job as a teacher and avoid being political. In her defense, Miss Nicole says that she is the mentor to these uh, two students. Therefore, it is just normal for these two people to look up to her. Miss Narin is for the idea that when Mayor Mosi arrives, that she needs to give them their space so that they can talk about whatever his concerns are because she is avoiding that the school be dragged into this mess. We finally see that the mayor arrives and when he arrives, after some, after some minutes before Miss Narin can leave, they are talking about his asking whether his concerns were considered you remember that the last time he did not want the launching of the Samaritan app to take place. And in his, uh, to his uh, question, Miss Nicole replies that she had taken up his concern to the Ministry of Education, the ministry concerned. But then they had replied through the principal and they had sent a copy to Mayor Mosi. But then Mayor Mosi had not received that copy of the letter because, as he puts it, his tray is full of letters. He is a busy person, therefore, it might have escaped his scrutiny. Now, about the letter, the Ministry of Education had indicated that it had taken over the matter of the Samaritan app. It was now beyond the, uh, it was now beyond the school. Then Mrs. Narin excuses herself and she leaves. When she leaves now, we see there is a conversation that ensues between, between Mayor Mosi and teacher Nicole. About his concerns, he feels that uh, this can be used as an avenue to tarnish his name. Therefore, he still holds his stand that they need to get rid of this Samaritan application. He feels that it will be an avenue that he'll be defamed and about that, Miss Narin, uh, sorry, about that, Miss Nicole is telling him, if at all they defame his name, he has an avenue of taking up the matter with the courts, the court of law, and now the mayor is asking, how will I be taking up the matter yet? People are posting anonymously. 
Miss Nicole makes him to understand the people are posting anonymously to the public. But then when it comes to the people who are running that application, they can unmask the identity of the posters. And if someone cannot substantiate their concern, they can be taken before a court of law and they can be prosecuted. Upon hearing this, you know, Mayor Mossi is apprehensive of what uh, the application can bring to light. Therefore, he's trying any avenue. The first avenue he was trying is to have a talk with Miss Nicole because he believes she is wielding the power. She can control this uh, information that comes through the application. Now, the other uh, type of, the other way he's trying to control the information that comes through the Samaritan, he says, then why don't you portray me in the positive light? In other words, if any if any information that comes through and the information is damaging, that it should not come to light. But then when it is, the, the information that portrays him in positive light is the one that he allows, it comes out. After that one also, uh, the, that attempt also fails, he decides that he will use bribery. He's asking Miss Nicole, could you name your prize? Monetary prize, whatever the amount of money is, I will give you the money he's attempting at bribery and he is using money. Miss Nicole even threatens him at that point. Do you want me to give this information to the Samaritan app that you've been trying to bribe me upon which the mayor is scared and he backs down? But the mayor seems not to be finished. He's still trying other ways. He also goes ahead and says, now that you said you want to com commercialize the application, that the people who have come up with the application, there's some money that will come back to them. Why are we looking for these investors far away? Yet I am here. You can just um, make me the investor. I pump in my money and all that is in a bid to control the information that comes through there, that comes through the Samaritan app. Once he sees that this one is not working, we are seeing that Mayor Mosi now is resorting to throwing people under the bus. He is resorting to betrayal. He goes ahead betraying his colleagues and portraying them in the negative light. The first one to face his wrath is his assistant mayor by the name of Ramdae. He accuses, you know, now you are trying to, uh, to portray people in the negative so that you can portray yourself as being the good person. Mm -hmm. He goes ahead and says, Ramde, first of all, he is someone who is messing the projects of the municipality. And he gives a case, for instance, the tamaking of the roads that was done haphazardly. This can be found on page 62. Further, uh, further than that, to defame uh, Assistant Mayor Ramdae, he goes ahead and talks about the way this person is swindling people off uh, using land. He can sell the same piece of land to about 10 people and he is giving them fake title deeds. Away from Ramdaina, we know they have already picked their positions. Some people are pro Mosi and other people are against Mosi. Now the people who are against him are the ones who are being portrayed in the negative. He also goes ahead and he's talking about the secretary to health the secretary of health by the name of ted we are learning that all the information is giving about ted among them things such as he ate a whole hospital that is the use of personification now with the use of personification eating a whole hospital what was he talking about he's talking about he gave the tender to relatives and allies and together they squandered the money that had been budgeted for the health centers. Then in place of the health centers, they ended up putting up some sheds, something that looks just bad so that they can justify the usage of that money. We're also learning about Ted, that this man used to be a DJ and he was responsible for a lot of noise pollution. Away from that, now you see every person is being portrayed as someone very negative. This man has eaten a whole hospital. He used to be a DJ who was responsible for noise pollution. And he used to make a living out of pirating other people's music. And then how did such a corrupt person get into office? We are learning that he was voted for unanimously and especially by the youth. He was appealing to the youth. Uh, to, he was appealing to the youth people. They were the ones who voted him in. 
they were attracted by his style of dressing. For example, he used to wear ripped jeans. But away from that, we are looking at Ted being someone who is not fit to be a role model. He is a drunk and he is usually smelling like a brewery. And apart from that, he is also illiterate. That is just some of the shade that Mosi is throwing to his opponents, the ones who have already skipped camp. They are no longer with him, therefore he's portraying them in the negative light. We still move further to another person who has been portrayed in the negative light. We are looking at Simo. What has been said about Simo? Simo, we are learning that he is someone who has been intimidating people, that he has a low degree, yet he has not stepped a day into a law school. In fact, we are learning that he bought his qualifications from the back street. And about Simo, we are learning that he is associated with outlawed gangs that make people to disappear. And away from that, he is he has his hand in drug trafficking. And among when we are talking about his family, his family has also not been spared. We are learning that his wife is a drunk and the son is constantly in and out of rehab. So even if Simo is into drug dealings, we are seeing that uh, Kama, Kama has not spared him because his child is also, a his child addict. is also a drug addict who is in and out of rehab constantly. And the wife is also a drunkard. Then Nicole, upon being given such information, Nicole is insisting, with such evidence, you can bring to account the people in a court of law, these people who are making your municipality's name to be tarnished, why don't you bring them before a court of law? You have a lot of evidence. But then, Mayor Mosi expresses some kind of lack of confidence in the justice system. He feels that the justice, the justice system will not provide the necessary justice that is deserved. And at the same time, you know now this person is desperate. He's trying to, he is blabbering a lot of information. He goes ahead and says, he's a good person because out of a loaf of bread, he only takes a slice. The other people, the way he, portray, uh, he portrays them in a comical way, he says, the other people are bad. Him, he only takes a slice of bread. The other people, they are eating a whole loaf, the wrapper, and if possible, they could have eaten the vendor the, as well. Uh, the bakery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is the kind of portrayal that he gives of his opponents. About Justice Jaden, the negative is also portrayed there saying, he hawks uh, justice like cabbages. Apart from that, he is sexually immoral. He learned that the wife had abandoned him. But despite that, he has a lot of mistresses. Then after saying this, Nicole now feels, then you should be supporting me with the application, the, with the application because mm. it can hold to account the corrupt leaders and make them to be prosecuted. When she says that, now we are, we are looking at Mosi, loses it. He says, he feels that the Samaritan now, now he is almost, uh, he is now almost sure that the Samaritan is a political uh, weapon meant to destroy his career. We are moving into the last bit of our scene two, episode two, and it is talking about Mosi faulting the application. Now that all his manipulations have not worked, he now starts to fault the application. He says, the teachers are the ones who are solely responsible. They're the ones who are raising, uh, they are raising people, they are raising their uh, generation of tomorrow in a negative way. For instance, how can they be saying that the police force can be replaced by some robots? According to him, that will now give an uh, will give the uh, will give people a negative look into the police. They'll be looking at the police and they'll be seeing negativity. And he feels that the app is not out to solve a problem, but it in, it is in fact being used to advance a political agenda. At the end of it, as we are coming to the end of this scene, we are seeing that he orders the deletion of posts in the Samaritan and. What if Miss Nicole does not adhere to this? He says there will be dire consequences. Now we see when he walks out, he is already in a foul mood. That brings an end to that particular scene. 
Uh, my colleague will continue from there. Uh, thank you, Teacher Rispa. So that is the end of uh, uh, scene two of act two. Now we look at uh, what is happening in uh, the next scene, that is scene three of act two. Now, um, our viewers, I want to take you back uh, a few steps into uh, the beginning of this act. Uh, that is, uh, mm, that is not actually the, the scene, scene three of act one. This is where we mentioned about some of the things that uh, Mossi and his team planned to do in order to fight the Samaritan. We have our whole episode uh, on that uh, scene and uh, I want to let what we have now here in this scene with what we discussed in that scene. We said they had five things to counter the information that is on the safari, mm -hmm. the Samaritan hub. And one of them was to have Mossy go talk to teacher Nicole. Mm -hmm. So this uh, scene that teacher Rispa has talked about, it is now uh, Mossy trying to uh, effect that go talk to teacher Nicole nicely and have her filter the information. But clearly you can see that it did not work as they had expected. Teacher Nicole is not so uh, soft as to be influenced by uh, corrupt leaders because she believes in um, doing what is right. Now, another thing that they had suggested uh, to do is uh, involve um, criminal gangs so that they can go and disrupt uh, any activity near the uh, municipal headquarters to ensure that a uh, vote of no confidence against uh, mm -hmm. Mia Mossi does not happen. Now that takes us to the event in uh, uh, scene three of Art two. So when the scene happens, the setting is still Madingo Golf Club and it's uh, on a Thursday afternoon. And uh, the characters we have in this scene is, uh, now the, remember we said there was a fallout among the leaders. Now we are looking at Lamdaye's team that are uh, comprised of Honorable Lamdaye, uh, the deputy mayor, then Honorable Seymour, as well as Honorable Ted. And then Honorable Basdell joins them later uh, towards the end of the scene. So when they gather, now they are talking about how they are meeting to uh, pass a vote of no confidence against mayor was mm -hmm. disrupted. Mm -hmm. So we can see that when they say they are going to involve their criminal gangs as well as the police, that is the lead ego as well as um, the other one was called um, Red Sun. Ghetto Boys. Yeah, the Ghetto Boys. Thank mm -hmm. you for that. The Red Eagle and the Ghetto Boys, as well mm -hmm. as the police, actually they followed that to the letter. They were equipped with tires and all that and tear gas and uh, stones mm -hmm. and they disrupted the meeting. So uh, jokingly, they are talking about how they were able to outrun the gang and I, I, they were able to escape and art. And they're also talking about how they did not actually anticipate that. They had not seen uh, Mia Mossi from that perspective. They didn't think that he's going to act to stop uh, the vote of no confidence uh, from being passed. Mm -hmm. So it caught it was a it caught them by a it took them by a surprise. Eh? Mm -hmm. They were surprised. Mm -hmm. The attack was a surprise, but they were able to turn out. Now they are convening, having a meeting mm -hmm. to see the way forward. Now that they're unable to, well, they were not able to meet. They were not able to. Uh, to move uh, or to pass a vote of no confidence against the mayor, what is the way uh, forward? So here um, we learned that Ted had been tasked to go and uh, assess or maybe see the situation on the ground. How many members of the chamber, how many councillors, how many aldermen are uh, ready to support them in uh, passing a vote of no confidence. So when Ted reports um, after his investigations, he says that uh, the members of the chamber are categorized into four. And he says the first category is the uh, indecisive category. Those people can't make and decision. They mm -hmm. sit on the fence. Yes. Um, they don't know. Actually, there is that one uh, elder man, is, they say that he does not even know when to eat. He can't even actually make a choice of what to eat, when to eat, and so on. So they just flow with the flow. Uh, they say there is another category of the 
members of the chamber and that is the headless. The headless are like just like the headless chicken. They can't think. They don't have a mind of their own. They blindly follow uh, the leader of their ethnic group. So if they they uh, their Allah um their alliance is with uh, Mia Mosi. They follow everything that Mia Mosi says. If their uh, alliance is uh, honorable, Basdeo, the opposition leader, they do everything that Basdeo says. You know, in politics, our viewers, people always have allegiance to a certain uh, politician. If it's the current politician, he has his own people. If it's the opposition leader, he has his own people. people. Now, these headless members of the chamber did not think for themselves. They just did whatever their head said without questioning. Mm -hmm. Then there is that category, and that is the, uh, the entrepreneurial type. Those are the people who want to make money out of every situation. Mm -hmm. So when they were approached by Honorable Ted and requested to support, they were requested to support them to pass the vote of no confidence against the mayor, they said that first they have to, money has to exchange hands. Mm -hmm. It means that they are corrupt. For them to side with Honorable Ted, they don't care mm -hmm. if uh, Mayor Mosi is fit to run the municipality or not. According to them, how, how are they going to benefit in terms of money, mm -hmm. monetary terms? How are they going to benefit from this whole situation? So they say that they are going to join them the moment money exchanges what? Hands. Hands. Meaning they want to be bribed. Mm -hmm for them to uh, actually join uh, Ramdaye and Ted and uh, Simo's uh, team. Mm -hmm. Then we have the fourth category of the members of the chamber, that is the independent-minded category. These are the people who do what they think is right. They are not influenced by anyone, they are not influenced by any situation, mm -hmm. and uh, they don't actually listen to anyone and they are known to serve no one. So uh, they also give an example of one, there is a Mr. Torch that uh, is uh, not influenced by, and then there is uh, this other Arab Arab guy eh, who actually was very popular and people thought that he would take the, uh, the mayor's position. But now, unfortunately, he's so uh, sick and they actually point out that they suspect mm -hmm. the mayor had something to do with mm -hmm. his illness mm -hmm. because he was gaining popularity. So uh, mayor was afraid that he might take his position. Mm -hmm. So they assume that he has actually poisoned this mm -hmm. person. We don't know how true that is. Maybe it's just them uh, splendid rumors. So with that, they, are, uh, they couldn't actually tell where they stand, the position of the uh, councillors and aldermen. They have no idea who is supporting them and they have no idea what percentage is against them. So um, at that particular moment, uh, they decide that, or someone suggests that they should team with Basdeo because uh, if they team with Basdeo, then they are going to win the headless category mm -hmm. to their side. Uh, those people who follow Basdeo automatically will fall back there into what? Okay. Passing their vote of no okay. confidence. So that's when Namdaya says that actually Basdeo had approached him concerning the issue without him knowing that mm -hmm. they had the same thought. And uh, he had invited him to this meeting. So at that particular moment, that's when Honorable Basdeo joins them. And uh, he comes with his own conditions. And the condition is that uh, if they team up or they join hands and they're able to uh, get or throw Mia Mosi out of uh, office, mm -hmm. then they are going to support Honorable Seymour to take up the uh, position of the mm -hmm. mayor, and then he, Basdeo, would be appointed, or Seymour would appoint Basdeo as his deputy mayor. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, what we call here in our country, Nusumkate, mm -hmm. that it's a win win. Situation. situation. We team up, we fight together as a team, and once we win, mm -hmm. we divide what? The this bread. mkate. Mm -hmm. Everyone gets half, right. and the other person gets half. So mm -hmm. it's a win-win situation, although it belonged to the opposition uh, team. So he comes up with his own um, uh, ways that they should uh, actually employ to defeat the uh, Mosi, and uh, he is uh, the leader of the opposition, so he is deep into politics. And some of the suggestions that he voices out 
actually scarce other members, someone like Ted. Mm -hmm. And they, they keep on saying that this is what? Bad politics. Mm -hmm. And he keeps on assuring them that that is how politic, politics is done. So what does he say? He says that um, uh, they can alienate uh, Mossi from the people. Even those who used to love Mossi to hate him. Mm -hmm. If that happens, it means most of people will be against Mossi, so it mm -hmm. becomes very easy to push him out of office. Mm -hmm. And he says the best way to do so is by a splendid lies that Mossi has been channeling mm -hmm. all the uh, municipality resources to uh, the wards occupied by people from his tribe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, they want to show that um, Mossi is tribal mm -hmm. and is corrupt. Mm -hmm. That way, People who don't belong to Mossy's tribe automatically will end up what? Hating him mm -hmm. and going against him. He says that they can also further subdivide that by spending more and more rumors, like mm -hmm. that rumor about one tribe smelling so badly, mm -hmm. about the types to keep on subdividing so that at the end of it all, mm -hmm. Mossy is left with no one behind him. And at that particular time, they can uh, strike and easily... Um, get him out of uh, office. So they also say they are going to have a, a rally. It, I think it's a rally. They are going to have a rally where they are going to publicly address the, uh, the public and uh, inform them about what Mosi has been doing, according to Basdeo. That is, mm -hmm. being tribal, favoring people from his ward and uh, channeling all the public resources to people who belong, belong to his ethnicity so uh they suggest that they should have a day for this public rally but ramdai says that they can't push it further or fall away because uh, rumor has it that uh Mo Mosi is uh looking for ways to have them arrested mm -hmm. so they need to beat him at his own game hold the rally first and portray him as a bad person before he gets them arrested mm -hmm. so they suggest that they would hold the lally the following wednesday and um air all the lies that they have uh against uh mossy and that marks the end of our act two uh scene three generally it just marks the end of our second uh act uh our viewers we are still not done with the plot remember that our play here has four acts we are only halfway this is the second act that you're done with. So stay tuned in and uh, you're going to learn more from the Top Notch team. Thank you for watching and be blessed. Goodbye. Goodbye.